Hello, friends. Welcome to the Show to Be Named Later podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Boss, joined by our good friend, Noah Storzinger, down in, down Missouri Way. Uh, and I got to tell you right off the bat, Noah, um, you know, we talked last podcast about what grinds my gears, and I'm, I'm going to feel bad. Well, not really, because most of this show is just me going to bitch. And it, it's not just because I'm an angry old man. Uh, I, I got it honestly this week, okay? And I, I let me let me let me explain it to you. This is the worst week of my year, all the way across the board. You know, some people, you know, they have trouble at Christmas time. Uh, some people don't like their birthdays. You know, maybe you have, oh, you had a, a really it's the anniversary of a really bad day that you had. Maybe something tragic happened. This is the worst possible week for Johnny Boss um, during the year. Do you you know why? I don't. Enlighten me. It's the only week in which there isn't any professional athletics going on at all. And they made it longer. It used to be that, you know, you would have, you would have, uh, you'd play Sunday, the uh, baseball would finish up on Sunday. You would have, uh, the home run derby Monday night. Then you'd have the all-star game Tuesday, take a day off Wednesday. You'd be back Thursday or something like that. I think the twins don't play till Saturday. Is that right? Yeah. It's uh Friday, Saturday. I think it is Saturday. Yeah. Right. So it, it's the one day out of the year that you don't have. And, and I'm sorry. I mean, I, I, yeah, I did watch WNBA a little bit last night. It's not the same for me. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I'm an angry man this week because there's just nothing uh, to, to keep my interest. However, there are a lot of things going on uh, regarding sports that, you know, not meaning that anybody is actually actually playing this week. So um, I figured it's time, uh, time to get into it uh, right now. Uh, all right. First things first. Uh, do you happen to watch the, uh, the home run derby on uh, – was that uh was that monday night right yeah yeah uh no not at all um i i just when i was a kid it was interesting i don't like the format um it it, it's just not entertaining anymore for me which i think is really sad but i don't know what to do at this point what do you do i i agree i i I just, you know, you know what it is. The, the home run derby to me is like watching an Adam Sandler movie. Like after 15 minutes, you're like, okay, Adam, I get it. I get what you're doing here, and now I'm bored. I like to move move along. You know what I mean? And that's how the home run derby is for for me. I, I don't need to. I can't watch. I can't ride my bicycle because it hurts my high knee. Blah blah blah. How does that guy even get work? Anyways, that's my point with the home run derby. Uh, it is Adam Sandler to me. And it's just not interesting. And um, what it was uh, Hernandez from the Dodgers, right? He's the first Dodger to win the the home yep. run derby. But I this, this is maybe the first year that I didn't watch one home run fly out of the. It just it just does not it, it just does not interest me at all. No, I, I think it would be, I would have more fun maybe if I was there in person. It's something I, I would, my, you know, a couple drinks, just watch some, some homers. Yep. Um, but on TV, I, I don't know. Like I said, as a kid, I, I always watched it. I loved watching, especially, you know, when you got um, some of your guys in the race, I mean, watching Morneau, it just out hit Justin, uh, Justin Hamilton. Yeah. Justin Hamilton. Yeah. Um, was was really cool to watch, but now Josh, I, Josh right? Hamilton. That, yeah. I, was, I knew it didn't sound right, um, but now I just don't. It, I don't know, and and you can play it in uh, MLB the Show too. Like if I'm doing a franchise, Home Run Derby will come around. If one of my guys is in it, I'll I'll do it. Yeah, and it still just doesn't feel as fun though. I don't know. That's just me. Okay. All right, I was just checking in that you know because we're trying to bring you you know the. The uh, the tall and the short, the old and the young, if you will. And I was just wondering how you young whippersnappers feel about something like that. Like you say, it's just not. Um, and then uh, the other thing. So I don't know. Maybe you've heard of the uh, the national anthem the night before uh, or the right before the home run derby. And and this one now. So so my problem with that. Okay, because I'm, I'm going to harp on the Major League Baseball quite a bit in this podcast episode. But who who's making decisions? Okay, like I never even heard of that woman until the next day. Okay, but 
the chance that you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna hire somebody and then she comes out and says oh well i was drunk that was and then my favorite is like i say taking your politics out of my sports people upset like because people are like wow that was the worst i've ever heard and and so then a couple days later after she said no i was you know sipping from the yak then there was all these folks coming out and saying you know everyone was so upset about the national anthem and i'm more upset about your reaction to this troubled person or like how did anyone fucking know that she was wasted when she sang the national anthem i thought it was roseanne barr for crying out loud i i know it i just watched the video of it and like i couldn't even make it through the whole thing like i got to like it was so crazy to listen to yeah and it, it's uh so okay so that's that's uh the one point now we're gonna shift to the actual all-star game um because you know in <clears throat> i believe it was 2019 was the last time um that all-star participants wore their their own colors right their own uniforms which i still to this day i i appreciate that that's what i grew up with um it was always something where you could say yeah you know what there, there's kenny landro from the minnesota twins i i'm so happy we have one guy on the field right now the last two years i thought the uniforms were pretty dope i i actually liked the uniforms the last two all-star games this year are you kidding me? What? Who is hiring people in the Major League Baseball? I, I don't get it. They, you know, I, I talked to our, our former guest, Gus, that night. We were texting back and forth, and he was like, how about those softball uniforms? I'm like, they're not even fit for softball uniforms. I thought it was the Battle of the Network Stars. I was waiting for Jan Smithers and Joyce DeWitt and, and Gabe Kaplan to, to come out and and – I don't know. To take it, take it at bat. Now that's you're too young to know the battle of the network stars. Uh, look it up. It's it's pretty interesting. But that that was and and it was enough that Manfred, I believe, had to come out and say we're exploring into looking as bringing back um, the players being able to wear their own colors to the game because that was absolutely ridiculous. It was disgusting. I don't I don't know what they were doing. And I, I, you know, the uniforms were okay. I was, I've never been a fan of wearing American League National League. I, I get why they did it, um, but it, it, maybe even let them wear their hat or, or, or something to where I can really tell, hey, that's that's Willie Castro out there, or that right. you know that's Carlos Correa, um, because it, it, it's to me it doesn't feel like representation. It, it, it's more like I'm just watching teams play baseball. I don't know. It, it's more fun when you can see all these represent represented guys of, of, of different teams, I think, playing ball. And I get it. It doesn't look as seamless because it's not one jersey. But I always thought that was the coolest part for me. I, I agree. And, and okay, so I'm, I'm not – well, maybe I'm wrong on that. I don't know. At least I have someone to agree with me, I think. A majority of baseball fans would agree that um, that that was absolutely ridiculous, um, and and so I got to ask. I mean, I mean, I, I know part of the answer to this because we're gonna we're gonna um, dig our claws in a little bit more on Mr. Manfred and Major League Baseball. But um, you know, I'm not an artsy guy at all. I okay, I can draw stick people, but there are a lot of people making tons of money based on the decisions that they made, like, you know, who's going to sing the national anthem or, Hey, I got a great idea for a uniform that millions of people are going to see. They make a top dollar and I could have done a better job designing those uniforms. I'm sorry. It, it, it's, it's, it's how I feel. Um, but anyways, okay. The one person that I, I do want to talk about um, uh, as far as the all-star game, cause I, I, I don't think that I've ever, asked your opinion on this and i got to give credit to a friend um who turned me on to him uh paul skeens what, what's your what's your take on him he's a stud man he, yeah he, he is when, when he came out of college too well and i don't know people don't forget or forget about this all the time so before he was with lsu he was with the air force yeah i know he didn't bomb hitting yeah, bombs. He, was, he was flying fighter pilots right or, or fire jets and then just decided, well, no, baseball. I mean, what 20-year-old kid 
flies fighter fighter jets and then is a rookie and starts the all-star game and and it, it's not even i don't know he, he was just so good um and his his mix looks so good and and in i i didn't think he would come out as good as he did um but man has he is that fun because i like the i like the Pittsburgh pirates they've always been a, a, a fun team for me um and you know, obviously, they've struggled a while, and I think Garrett Cole was really their last good pitcher. Now to see him kind of come out with this this stud of an ace is, is really cool. But he's been he's been something else. It's fun to watch. And, and you know who his manager was at LSU, right? I don't. Was it what? Is it isn't the guy that either Derek Shelton, the the the, the former twin? Well, Derek Shelton, former former bench coach. Yep, I don't. Did he coach at LSU? Uh, it, it is a former twin. Hold on a second. No, I, uh, um, because if you remember, he was the guy that, uh, that I believe he was, I thought he was even, uh, I thought that Derek Shelton was the guy that was even being interviewed by the pirates. Um, oh, wait now says Jay Johnson. I, I thought, or wait, I'm sorry. He's the pitching coach, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He's the pitching coach. I'm sorry. Not that, 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 I, I, I'm sorry. I got a lot of things going on in my mind. Derek Shelton, I believe he was, I thought he was in the line for the Pittsburgh job or maybe they were even talking about Rocco, you know, when Rocco was first starting out or whatever. And I, and then remember he jumped ship during, I believe during the season and, and, and became pitching coach at LSU. And I, I thought, who Ooh. who goes from the big leagues down to college? It wasn't. I I know who you're talking about. It wasn't Jay Johnson. Um, ooh, now I got a former Twins pitching coach. Because yeah, oh, Wes Johnson. Wes, Wes Johnson. Johnson. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, I thought he got like a DUI or some, and then he just, or maybe I'm thinking of someone else. But he, yeah, he jumped ship mid season. Right, and, oh, and, and, and nobody takes a lesser job, you know, where I thought, I don't know, I thought it was weird, but, um, okay, back to Skeens. I got to say, because I know that he was a big deal at LSU. Uh, he was the number one overall, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Was he the number one overall? Okay. Um, and then I kind of forgot about him, and I believe his, his, first, his first pitching appearance in the major leagues uh, – my buddy P was like, Hey man, how did, how did Skeens do today? And I'm like, wait, what I had. And since he said that I've been following this guy, like, okay. So when the twins played the pirates, uh, I happened to be at P's house and he happened to be out of the room. They interviewed him for like, I, I think it was like for 15 minutes or whatever. And then you hear what he's saying and you go, Oh wow, this guy's pretty cool. He's a pretty cool guy. Now, every time that he pitches, I'm like, Hey P, did you, catch out your boy Skeens man and he's like ah and he won't ever take he he doesn't really ever take credit usually he'll take credit you know but it, it it's funny because we had a guy back in the day um I was kind of uncomfortable when he was talking to the ladies and he had this deal where you'd be at a party and there'd be you know hottie that you're talking to, he's like hey how about my how about my boy John Smoltz, dude? And like this chick would have no idea what he's talking about, and he would use that all the time. Hey, what do you think about my boy John Smoltz, dude? And and so I had asked for permission. I'm like, if you don't want this pee, I'll take that. I want to go out to the bars, to the torchlight parade, wherever, and meet hotties and go. Hey, what do you think about my boy Paul Skeen? Because nothing that I'm using right now is working, anyways. So I'm I'm, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give credit to P on that. And how's my boy Paul Skeen, man? Love it. He's been, it, it, it's, it's fun to watch. I, I, I love that he's a rookie. Um, who was the last rookie that started an all-star game? Hideo Nomo. And there's only been five. Uh, there, I believe Hideo Nomo was the last one. And that one, you know, I, I don't even know because he had pitched, he had pitched in Japan before he came to the United States. Correct. So yeah. it wasn't like a 22 year old kid you know, making it as a rookie. Um, I believe Fernando Valenzuela was uh, the second to last one. And and I do remember, you know, that kid was, I think he was 20 years old with the Dodgers. And I mean, I remember like they, 
all of East LA would shut down every time he was pitching, like completely. Nobody went to their jobs. Like, um, uh, the, the crazy guy, uh, the, the guy that talked to the ball, Paul Fidrich, I believe he was. And then, um, the fifth one was somebody that I, I wasn't aware of, but you know, like with skiings, I mean, you, you just, you gotta love it, man. And, uh, you know, a face like a pepperoni pizza, you would think, you know, that he can buy some clear so with, you know, if you're, you're starting in the, in the, uh, the all-star game is working. But anyways, just a great story. I, I am really high on this, on this young man. Um, uh, well done Pittsburgh. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's get to some more things here. Uh, okay. Because this kind of goes back and forth, uh, between the NBA and, um, major league baseball. because I believe that Ron Manfred did, uh, comment about Mr. Silver and what a great guy he is. And we're talking about who's making decisions. Um, you happen to see the NBA's huge, huge, huge TV deal, uh, with, Everybody and China, I believe, right? Yep. Which means that they're basically doing this to the NBA fan, correct or not? You want to, you know what I'm talking about? You want to set it up? Um, well, that's the thing. I don't know a ton about it. I don't know what you know about it, but it was a it, quite a big deal, wasn't it? Yeah, because basically what it means is that the NBA now can, so I believe it's NBC. Uh, Amazon Prime, I think Disney is involved, uh, ESPN. So basically that, that means that, you know, your run with any kind of local programming is that because it's controlled by, so if the, if the Wolves play five nights a week, you might get three games that if you have cable, that's fine. But then two of those games are going to be streamed on Amazon Prime or Disney or whatever the fuck. Okay. And even Charles Barkley came out and said, Shame on you, NBA, because when, when you put money, which we know is the, you know, is, is the, 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 the leader in everything that's being done. But Charles Barkley even said, I have no respect for an organization that just puts that above everybody else. And, and you know how frustrating it's going to be. To say, okay, three nights a week I can watch the Wolves and they got a really big game. Oh, they're playing the defending champion Boston. Nope, that one's going to be streamed on fucking Amazon Prime up your ass. No, yeah, like, and it's different. Like, for me, like, I have all of those services, so I'll be able to watch. But, again, it, it comes back to the, uh, what was it, the divisional game with the Chiefs and, and, and yep. the Dolphins or whatever. Yep. Um, who cut out a bunch of people just, just for the money uh, to, to throw it on all these networks who are not making money, by the way. None of these fucking streaming services are making money and they're doing everything in their power to continue to keep people on these services. And it's I, like I, every time I, I see the bill for it, I, I, you know, I swear at myself because I'm like, God damn it, why do I keep paying for this? But the issue is at this point in, 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 media history you almost you almost have to just to watch shit um and so that's frustrating that you're you're pushing fans to to do all this crazy shit when when it just used to be so much more simple i agree and and it it's I, you know they they celebrated it like this was okay. Like this is the future, and we love this. And and then Manfred came out from Major League Baseball. It basically, it means that your your independent uh, local television service or cable service is not going to be a part. Like um, because I think the Yankees are the ones that are fighting this the most because of the revenue that they brought in individually on their own setup. Okay, um, you know, but like Major League Baseball is saying. Well, and we will take care of all of this. Just like, and Manfred like praised and celebrated Silver. Like, what a great, thing. this is what we've got to follow. And it, it will only mean that you are going to have to find the twins then, I would imagine, on four different streaming services. And I'm not going to do, I'm not going to do it. I, I it, it's, it is, it is, it, it, it just how makes many, me so upset. How many jobs do, w w you know, would that cut out a, a job for, for a Corey Provis? Um, 
Well, no, because I think that it would still be the the twins. Like if the Major League Baseball ran it like they do, I think with the Padres right now, right? I think that you still have your local your local deals, and they're just saying, no, we're in control of where you can you can watch these guys play. Okay. Um, but it's it's not it's not the same. And why why won't you? I mean, I don't know when when the Chiefs played. Uh, the divisional game on uh, what's this? Two, what is that? Apple, Peacock. It was Peacock. So they have their own people. Do they have their own announcers? Their own camera deal? So yeah. I mean, eventually, yeah, it's going to trickle down to people. I would think are going to lose lose some some work because it. You understand what I'm saying? If you have another company doing that, that means okay, I don't get to work three nights a week or what? I mean, I, I just, I'm just tired. And then I heard uh, that the WWE wrestling is, is going to Netflix. Okay. And they, they, they've cut ties with, uh, what is it? TNT or whatever. I'm like, I, I guess, you know, I, they had me for 51 years. I guess my run is over with professional wrestling. So did TNT lose WWE and the NBA then? Yeah. That's huge. Right. That's- they, that's right. almost a death to a channel right there. You're looking at because they're saying that in what 10 years, like Joe Biden saying the Republican party won't even probably be around in another 10 years. I don't know. It, it, is that what they're saying that, that TNT is, is going to go the way of the Dodo bird? Or are you just going to have to, are you going to have to stream TNT? I mean, what I got a Fubo now and I can stream different channels on, on that deal. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I hate the world we live in, though. That's that's all I'm going to say, because it makes no sense to me at all. It's money. It's all money. Okay. Well, okay. And then speaking of money, um, with this being, with this deal being made, because <clears throat> I want to <clears throat> remind everyone that the NBA controls sixty percent of the WNBA. Okay, but now did you see this with the TV deal that went down? The WNBA stands in the next twelve years to make two point two billion dollars. That means two hundred million dollars a year to that league, and they're still pissed. They're still bitching about it. It, it came out yesterday, and they're still upset. Oh, this is such underwhelming. Do you know that next year? Those women's lives are going to be different because of the amount of money or the, the 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 bump in pay, which I think was very very generous, and they're still pissed about it. But I I can't help you, ladies, because like I said, the NBA still controls sixty percent of your shit, and so I you know what? Maybe you got to take it. Hey, Rome's not built in a day, okay? Or Amazon or whatever whatever however you want to play it. The, Island of blue dolphins. Why don't you take what you can get at the time you can? Because 15 years ago, five years ago, it wasn't even close to what you're getting right now. That, greed. I, I don't know. And quite honestly, like, look, I, I, I just pulled it up on my, my monitor, um, my other monitor here. And I'm looking at this, this deal. Um, and, and who's, the, who's the headline picture? Caitlin I'm, Clark. Oh, the one that's not allowed to play in the WNBA three-point shootout. Did you know it was WNBA All-Star Weekend? I didn't until yesterday. I think she declined it is what I heard. Oh, she declined. Okay, I'm sorry. Yep. I, I apologize. Why but, is that? The, the girl had 19 assists last night. <laughs> Set another record. I, okay. I don't know. I'm just – all I'm saying is, like, look, Caitlin Clark's got to be, you know <laughs> – She's got to be a lot richer than she should be at this point. Because if you're telling me, you know, five years ago, if you're like, hey, the WNBA is going to have a $2.2 billion TV deal. Right. It's basically because of one person. I'm sorry. It's because of one person. It, it is. And, and okay, so she played here uh, last week, right? And and uh, the Target Center – they they took down the, you know, they put these big black curtains up in the upper deck so that you don't feel like, uh, you know, 10 people are watching the game or whatever. And I believe they took those down. 
Now, my deal is Cheryl Reeves. Yeah, I've been on your ass for, for a few weeks now. But here's the deal. How many motherfucking championships have the Lynx won? And how many times have you had to fucking take the black curtain out of the upper deck for the Minnesota Lynx? Okay. But now you do. And you're still going to bash Caitlin Clark. Doesn't make any sense to me. Cheryl, who doesn't want her on your U.S. Olympic team. And while we're on that, do you know any of the of the players on the, the women's Olympic team? Because I looked at their roster today, and I maybe know four, maybe five of the women on that team. Yeah, I, I <laughs> again, my knowledge with WNBA comes from a few past Lynx players. And at this point, knowing the new era of WNBA with Kaylin Clark, Angel Reese, uh, you know, Paige Beckers is going to be there next year, stuff like that. Yep. So that that's really <laughs> my knowledge at, at this point. Okay. And so like, then I guess you won't, you won't answer this question. Like Brittany, Brittany Griner is on, on the team. And like, I'm sorry, did that dude actually ever publicly thank the United States for getting them out of Russia? Like, I, I know that, that they thank president Biden personally, but not. And, and, and my point is, is this is a woman who bashed this country for years and years and said, how, how ridiculous. And then she pulls one of the most bonehead fucking deals ever by bringing a controlled substance into a non friendly controlled substance country like Russia. I mean, like the most boneheaded fucking deal ever. Like, well, I went to Mecca but I had, I, I wore a crucifix around my neck and I don't know. They didn't, they didn't accept me in Mecca. I don't understand it. The stupidest thing. And then her country that she hates bails her out. And now she's playing on the Olympic team. And like, does she even want to represent this country? I mean, I have problems with that shit. No one cares about Megan R Rapino anymore. They don't. Colin Kaepernick is he even still breathing. All right. We don't care about this shit. And yet, these are the people that are representing your country in in the Olympics. It, it's and I don't I don't want to be that guy, but I'm sorry. Like I'll be that guy. I see a lot more patriotism from the men's side than the men's teams than all the women's teams that have represented this this, yep. this country. So uh, it's a little frustrating. It, it, it's hard to root for you when all you do is 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 bash the country you live in that we all love. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Now, um, I do want to be, okay. So with that being said, uh, since when did the men's national team, when, when did the studs, well, not, I, I wouldn't say studs now, but when did the, I guess the marketable, big names decide that they wanted to play on the team. Now I looked at this roster the other day and you know, with the exception of Kevin Durant, I'll give Durant because Durant always would play for the U S for the United States, but where LeBron, where's Curry been the last 12 years. And now suddenly they are Joel Embiid. I think Tatum played the last in the, in the world basketball classic, but, what is it? And so these guys, their careers are now in the twilight. And now suddenly they, they, they want to play on the, on the national team. What the fuck is this all about? I, I question that myself. Cause I don't, I don't know. And it, it's gotta be, it's gotta be this, you know, the team's upcoming season, injury status, money. Um, I don't know why it all culminated this year of like, Hey, let's just, put a God squad together and just go destroy other countries of basketball. But like, it, I mean, I don't know. Do you see what they did to Serbia? Destroy yeah. Oh them. yeah. I'm watching the replay right now. Um, <laughs> but I, I just, I don't get, is it because these guys are old and not really relevant the way that they used to be that, that they're making their, uh, their, their victory lap tour kind of thing internationally because, um, you know, LeBron on the team, it, it, do I think that he deserves it this this year? No, but I would have liked to see him play the last 20 years on that team. You know what I mean? I, like if you were if you were a star basketball player, I mean, 
you know, you're talking every four years, this comes around. Would you would do it every four years? You if I, if I had the talent to do it. Yes, absolutely. I would. No, okay. no, you, you would not. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, Again, Let I me think ask you, this. you think Anthony Edwards, if if Anthony Edwards at 40 years old was good enough to play in the Olympics, do you think he'd do it? I bet you yeah. would. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, my boy, and I still say the best basketball player of all time is Michael Jordan. But after the dream team, Jordan, and I had, I had a problem with this man. He said, I won championships at every level, high school, college, uh, pro Olympics, uh, what else do I have to prove? No, you're playing for your country. So fuck off. And I had a problem with that, with, with MJ saying that I was like, it doesn't matter if, if, if I had three gold medals, damn it, I'm going to get four. That's yeah. I mean, I, I absolutely, I think, I think there's, I would assume there were just other factors that go into it. When you talk about injury and I, I'm sure there's money incentive, whatever it might be, but yeah, I don't know. Like, because I always thought that's what you did with the Olympics. You sent your best of the best out there. You know what right. I mean? So, I, I don't know. Well, and but I mean, for you, you don't even understand. Like, the United States only lost once prior to, I mean, once or twice prior to uh, professionals being able to. I grew up with, they were all college kids. Yeah. And they still would fucking beat ass. Okay. Um, but we've, we've had professionals playing for quite, quite a while. And, you know, the last, the, 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 the world, uh, basketball, the, the FIBA world basketball champion, what we lost the bronze medal game to Canada. That's, that's not America. That's not even Mexico. Seriously. Um, all right. Final thing that I'm going to make on, on the streaming shit, because I, I'm still really, really, really disappointed by this. Um, but one point I didn't make the last time around, and I'm going to make it now. So, you know, I, I've, I've got the Fubo, you know, so I can at least watch Twins games. But I'm not, I'm not content. I'm not happy, okay, because I like to watch the Twins games. I like to play MLB The Show while I'm, while I'm watching. And here's the great thing. I can play it. I always watch the Twins at bats offensively. Uh, I watch that usually live. And then when the pitching goes, that's when I switch. I play a little baseball. Then I come back and then I can rewind the, you know, the, who was on the mound and what happened and blah, blah, blah. Right. Can't do that anymore because I've got to go to a whole new system through my TV just to get to Fubo. I can't go look now. Let's say that the WWE is on their last Monday night raw. And so I want to go from the Twins game to Monday night. Nope, can't do that. I've got to circumvent the whole fucking thing. And this is why, oh, yeah, poor me. But I brought up P before, and he, you know, he he gave me, he has not been able to figure out the rewinding. He always used, had it to a two minute boom, and you're you're to the next pitch. You know what I mean? If you, if you, if you taped it, we have both been struggling. And this is the analogy that he, he gave, he gave me another analogy, but this is what I like in it too. Um, we love Starburst. We love the, the candy Starburst. But he brought it to my attention, and when he did, it was like it was like somebody had had given me the biggest advice of every. He said, "You know what? I like Starburst, but it's too much work. You have to unwrap every single individual one." And I thought, you know what? He's right for. All the work that you got to do to eat just a package of Starburst is way too much for the enjoyment of the fucking candy. That's how I feel about Fubo or any streaming fucking service where I can't play video games or I can't watch uh, CNN news and then just flip right back to, to the game. And then I can't rewind and see what I'm rewinding so that I can stop it on. You know what I'm saying? And that oh, yeah. really grinds my gears. I do. So, sorry, as I'm listening to this, I just think about, like, imagine some kid from, like, a third world country in Africa listening to your first world problem of of, of trying to maneuver. Tech. Anyways. Uh, Don't care. No, 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 here's, my, here's, my, here's my thing. Um, what you should do, just get a second, get a second TV. 
then then you can do both at the same time. They're not expensive. You see anymore. what they're doing to us? No, no. It Think did. about that. You see, oh yeah, oh, and I'm sorry, fucking Rwanda. Yeah, I've got my life is you know terrible. But no, fuck that. Why do I have to? Why do I have to give in? Why why can't they just see us a little? Give us a little space. That's what you, you know, get. My now. Sucks. I you know, I'm sorry that I offended anybody else for my first world problems, but I'm telling you, I, I don't care for it. Don't care for it. I'll get you a second TV. It's too much. No, under under principle, I won't do that. Because it's just, it's, no, it's, it's sellout, total sellout. Speaking of boneheads, uh, do you happen to uh, catch our, <laughs> our wide receiver from the Minnesota Vikings? What are your thoughts about that? Wait, what do you do at this point? Because, uh, I mean, Kevin O'Connell, the first time, you remember what happened last year? We was driving like 140 down the, the freeway. Um and yeah, said, they pretend to a sick dog as he's going uh, east, and I believe his dog was west. Uh, but go ahead. So it, he had basically, I think O'Connell had said last year, you know, it was a, it was a stupid mistake, and it's never going to happen again. Uh, I think that's know, what Jordan Addison said as well, right? Like, and he was right. He wasn't going 140. He was going zero. <laughs> You know what happened though? Uh, he posted on on his social media right after it happened. There's a what picture happened? of a, a picture of a mimosa. What are you doing? It, I, I so I, just, I don't understand these young young guys. And like I say, I mean, he did. He said I'll, it won't happen again. He was clocked at 140 last year. He was going zero miles an hour. He was blocking a lane near the airport. Passed out. For crying out loud. And you know, Jim Suan uh, had an interesting article the other day in the Star Tribune and said last year at the time, he really didn't have any consequences, which is pretty much is is par for the course in today's society. We're not we're not gonna punish you at all. We're not gonna say you have to be responsible for your actions at all. Um, he had to issue an apology, basically. And that was it. Maybe ran a few laps, as Jim Suhan uh, pointed out, but but nothing. And now do I think that maybe you need to do something? Actually, I mean, there were some people that said he shouldn't even be on this team. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of people saying that he should be traded. And now I've seen, obviously, you hear the uh, the Ayuk rumors out in, in, in San Francisco saying we should just swap wide receivers. Um but I think they're waiting to see if the NFL is going to suspend, fine, do whatever. I, don't, I think if they don't, I think the team will. Um, because it, it, it's looking very slim that he gets a second contract with the Vikings at this point. So I got a question for you, and I want you to think about this. Um, because there used to be uh, – some integrity that franchises would have when it would come to this. And I'm not talking about cancel culture, fuck that shit. All right. I'm not talking about uh, being woke or, or, or going, okay, what do I think? How do I think the public is going to perceive me as a franchise or an owner or a coach or whatever it is, but they're used to teams used to make the right call. And in my, my case in point, um, Minnesota Vikings, early eighties, uh, Oh, there was a there was a Green Bay Packer defensive back, uh, Mossy Cade, I believe his name was, uh, or Katie Mossy Cade. Really, really good defensive back in the NFL, and uh, he was convicted, or at least at that time he was charged with him. But I think it came out that yeah, he raped his fourteen year old cousin or something like that. The Packers cut him. The Vikings picked him up on waivers. And then this all game, and there was such a backlash, and they're like, nope, they cut him right away. They didn't even, I don't even think he practiced with them because there was such a a backlash of like, like, no, this is not, he's not my kind of guy. Okay. Now, if you think about what we talked about last podcast, Kyrie Jackson, right? 
defensive back from the Minnesota Vikings, who dies as a result of some bitch driving drunk. Would you not think, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to influence you, but as a franchise, you might be a little strong with someone like Jordan Anderson because of the situation and say, look, we're not going to fucking tolerate this. I feel like you have to, especially after that. And and it's, I guess I didn't even think about this. Uh, you know, Jordan Addison was, was very, very, very complimentary of, of Kyrie Jackson, uh, you know, during, during training camps and everything. And, you know, was very, was very sad about the news, obviously. Um, and I didn't even think about this a couple days later, he does his own, <laughs> he gets his own DUI. So, um, yeah, I feel like as an organization, especially, I mean, something's got to click with him. What, how old is he now? 20, 22, 23. I, I don't know how old Addison yeah. is, but, um, still a young, dumb kid, obviously in, but here's the deal. I don't make fucking money at all. Okay. I'm not, I, I don't have any money in my pocket. I'm rich here and here. Okay. But here's the thing. I can always take an Uber or, well, no, I don't even remember because I apps, the only apps I know are mozzarella sticks. So I still call a cab and yeah, I don't want to pay $40 for a cab because I might be able to spend that money at the bar or at, on a pizza when I get home. Okay. But you do that because it's the smart thing to do. This guy makes what would I make like a, 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 a hundredth of what he, what his take home pay is. And you're telling me that either through friends or cause everyone wants to be your friend when you're a millionaire or the money that you have, what well, you don't get street cred. Cause you got to take a fucking Uber home. I mean, seriously. I, yeah, I don't understand. I, I don't understand. I don't think we'll ever be able to understand it because we're never in his shoes. But, but I just, again, like I can't say it enough. How dumb can you be? especially after everything that happened recently and last year and, and just is being a professional, not a thing anymore, or, or, or are we just letting guys do whatever the fuck they want now? I, and I understand you're paying them a lot of money and they're making you a lot of money, but they still work for you. So can we have a little bit of accountability in the sense That's of what I'm saying. no, not in today's society. And, you know, last podcast, I wanted to bring this up and I, I had forgotten it. Um, and I don't know the woman's name. She, I, I believe she was um, a U.S. gymnast um, who said, and, and she took, she had to like remove the post off of X or whatever, because she got so much backlash for it. She said, uh, our gymnastic team could be a lot better. The U S gymnastic team. She said, our coaches are no longer able to motivate us the way that coaches used to be able to do it because everybody is so afraid of, um, well, he made me feel like this and he hurt my feelings. And, and, and so, or, you know, and so everybody is freaked out. And she said, at times it, it it's hard, but you know, you had a basketball coach in junior high that would play that game quite a bit. You know what I mean? And there are times when it's, it's hard if you are the athlete, but there are times when you need that. And, and, and this particular former U S gymnast said, look, our coaches are not able to throw the smack down the way that it used to when it was a time when you need it the most. It, it just doesn't. So basically what she's saying is our, our be, besides Simone Bilas, she said, we're, we're soft. Okay. And I've got to believe if that's in women's gymnastics, I got to believe in, in men's athletics. If, if that's going on, it's the same deal, but it's even worse, man. No. Oh, yeah. I, and, and, I, I, I don't think I like throughout high school, I never experienced that. I think a lot of my coaches were still pretty tough, uh, which I appreciated, but you know, it, it's, it's something you see so much more now with trying not to step on toes, walking on eggshells, just try not to offend anyone or make parents mad anymore. But I think you see the difference in, in, in kids now where, where there's just, and the way they grow up, no one's 
tough anymore. And, and it, it pisses me off. And it, it's just so hard to, to, to shape people and mold people now to, to being good fucking people because everyone is just so, I don't know. It's all about them. And, and it, it's just, you piss me off and I can't operate anymore because of it. So I need like, whatever happened to the world doesn't give a shit about you. Like I, I who was the one kid that was like, well, the world should care about me. No, it shouldn't. It literally is not made that way. Right. So, I, I, and I, I agree. And it, you know, you, you hit the nail on the head, you're preaching to the choir or whatever cliche you want to bring. I mean, it, it, it makes me not even want what, what you just described makes me not even want to do what I do for a living anymore. Like it, it, it be a teacher because of what you just explained, but you have no idea um, what, you know, and as far as our world, like, um, when did everybody stop uh, being, I don't know if it's a licensed driver, but why is everybody stopped driving? We, like traffic rules don't apply anymore. You talked about me first. I cannot, the most stress other than not having pro sports on during a week is road rage. That's the only stress I got in my life, man, because there are such idiots of exactly what you're talking from pedestrians thinking that I can just cross the street anytime I want. And I don't know. I thought steel beats flesh. You know, I don't slow down. I speed up and I try to swerve just to give them a little scare. But the idea of, you know, there is no courtesy at a four way stop any longer. People just do not get, and it's all because I, I come first, I come first. You should, uh, you heard of the Kansas City caboose? No. These motherfuckers that they, when I, let me tell you, a red light will hit at a light, at, you know, four way light. Uh, red light turns red, and you'll see like five more cars yep. just, just come there. I'm like, are you that much of a bitch right. that you have to wait another minute and a half? You're that, or even a stoplight. Like my first week I moved down here, I almost got, absolutely t-boned to to hell because i'm at a four-way stop it's my turn after this car goes and i start inching and the the guy behind the car that just went just immediately sped right through because he didn't want to wait one car one yep. car risked his his health my health all that just so he didn't have to wait five seconds and this is the world we live in man and 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 like i said i i don't want to get um, too, but I, I, I just, I don't, I don't recognize the world, um, you know, we live in and, you know, we can go all the way down the road. Like, uh, you know, like, geez, people, I, I haven't seen so many people disappointed about two inches since stormy Daniels, you know, sorry. That, that was the only funny one that I thought about because it's not a funny deal. You know what I mean? Like, um, <laughs> anyways, did you get that joke? Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, Finally, I did want to, uh, um, not finally, I got a couple other things, but um, I was really pleased, um, but I do want your opinion on it uh, because when I heard um, Triple C, Carlos Correa, you know, with the planner, uh, is that going to be, is that going to be a, a thing that we're going to deal with all year? Um, my optimistic brain says no but my realist brain says yeah because i i don't know if you've ever had plantar fasciitis but that is a bitch i and, i hear it it's very very painful yep yep now he said it's not as bad as it was and it's the other foot um but he also said he knows how to handle it now which leads me to be a little more optimistic um but i, I don't know how it how it starts and whatnot but can we stop <laughs> with this shit like yeah. how do you keep get i don't well I don't yeah I, I agree with that because you know what we never hear of turf toe any longer how about we just stop dealing with planter fight she asked as yeah right? and, and so <laughs> i i don't know and and i i think it'll be fine like you still you think about the playoffs right um and how valuable carlos correa was during the playoffs he was dealing with plantar fasciitis the whole time so it you know he can play through it, and again, he said this wasn't as bad. 
um, which is good. And hopefully these, these days off really helped him. I applaud him sitting out from the all-star game in the right. sense of because he, he sat out another one, right. When his wife was, was pregnant, right. He sat out. Uh, that was, was that when he was a rookie? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was going to give him kudos because I just figured he would take a five day vacation, right? Like to see him on the field. Like I, I figured, is it like, you know, is it one of these deals where, you know, guys like, Oh, I made the all-star team. Who cares? You know, like, is, is that where we're at in life to see him on the field? And you could see he was soaking everything in, man, that, that made me proud of him. Well, and he was, he was very, you could tell it felt different this year, especially just because, you know, this is after his big contract that he signed. Um, he's with the, you know, it's his first one as a twin. Um, I think he's really, really bought into being a Minnesota twin and, and being yeah. in Minnesota, which is super fun to see. So um, I think that was special. I think, you know, he was there in support of Willie Castro too, which, which was yep. cool. It was Willie's first one. So um He's just been I think Correa, a Correa is, like Ty. I think his family plays a big part in that as well because I think his family really, really likes um, living living in Minnesota. And I think one of the things is uh, the people, you know. And I will say Minnesota, nice man. Um, but I think he compared Minnesota to New York um, or what was it? San Francisco was that the the first team? And, yeah. No way, man. You got it the best in Minneapolis for sure. He, I think he absolutely does. Especially like it, it's a fan base that will love you forever. And, and it's, you know, it's a place where, you know, obviously wherever he goes, he gets booed. Um, yeah. But he, he always, the all-star game. And that was in Texas. Yep. <laughs> and, and it, you know, it's, it's a fan base. I think we need to go to New York, you go to San Francisco, um, little shorter leash over there. So, you know, I think this is, it, it seems like he's been very, very um, at peace and content with his decision, um, which I think was just a blessing in disguise for him. So I'm really happy for him. Okay. Do we see Royce back after all-star game, all-star break? Um, I don't know because the twins also just traded for a, you see, they got Ryland Bannon from the Mets. Yeah, right. And uh, no, no, my buddy Connor is like, "Are you so excited about PJ Dozier?" And I was like, "Wait, DJ Dozier, the running back from Penn State?" That no, uh, I was not overly excited. I, I think it's it's fine, um, but I mean, I wasn't. It, it didn't like as you like to say, it didn't change my daily life. You know, anyway, no, it's but, it, it was it was a, it's an insurance move because you know Miranda's now hurt. Um, they think he'll be back after the first or second day. Um, Wait, who hurt? Miranda. That's why Diego Castillo got called up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, oh, I'm it, sorry. I switched. I, I'm so sorry. I switched to basketball because uh, I was already thinking about something when I brought up PJ. Dozier. We'll get to PJ Dozier in a second. All right, go ahead. Well, no, I was just you know, I I think you see Royce relatively soon. It doesn't seem like it's it's anything crazy i think they're being cautious at this point which you know it scares me a little bit with him and and like feels like you need to buxton him at some points where you're just you wrap him in bubble wrap because god it it's it's scary similar at this point now with where where they're at um buxton's been playing every day though so yeah. you know i don't know but um that's been quite the surprise i i think <laughs> when you can have a healthy Correa. Royce Lewis, Brooks Lee, and Jose Morant. I mean, and Boston. That, yep. That's yep. going to be. Uh, and, you know, hey, let's not forget about Carlos Santana because that guy has has given to me, if, if, if he wanted to get a hit the rest of the year, I think he would have still overachieved any expectations that I had for Carlos Santana this year. Well, and, and you know, Twins fans were calling for his his to be DFA'd after the first month of the season because yep. he, he oh. laid a shit burger. Oh, I've got friends that were <laughs> same deal. Okay. But man, has he been like that? Carlos Santana's the guy you trade for at the deadline, you know, yep. to, to go get a vet who will, you know, switch hitter, um, 
can give you some good at bats and man, has he, has he done that? So it's been, it's been a good turn for him. I really, it, it's been fun to watch. So I still want a Valdi though, man. I do. Dude. And, and so, I, I'm still hoping that, that the, they do now. What I don't know anything about the guy they just traded for. Can you give well, us some insight to him? He's a minor league guy. It's it's for insurance. It it's you know, hey, if if Miranda, Correa, Lewis, they're all out, you know, we we need some infielders. So they called up this guy. He's had a cup of coffee in the MLB. I mean, nothing yeah, nothing fancy. He's not a not great, but he's just kind of insurance at this point. So, um, but but we'll we'll see. Uh, the guy that they've been targeting and, and I'm, I don't know how I feel. It, it sounds like they're going after rentals, um, which makes sense, I guess. But uh, the number I'm okay one name, rentals at this point, I really am. Yeah. The, the number one name that's popped up is UC, Usai Kikuchi from, from Toronto. Yep. Who everyone's really high on that too, man. I, I don't know. I, I, I think it would be an upgrade for our, our starting rotation for sure. Now you, I, you seem doubtful. I I think regular season, yeah. I he's he's not a guy to me that you work horse in the postseason. Which no, not we that you faced need him in the postseason. We what? We faced him in the postseason, right? And, and he we, didn't scare me. He didn't scare me, and, and Carlos Correa got that two run single off of him when they took out Barrios that that yeah. one game. So, um, you know, it it's he's got some playoff experience at least, but I don't. He's been much better. When he first his when his career got started, he was atrocious, and so that's why I think there's doubt in me because I've seen the bad. Um, but it, he's been a lot better, and I don't think it would cost an arm and a leg to go to go get him. Um, I have seen people <laughs> wanting to go after Jose Barrios again. Um, I wouldn't mind it. I, you know, I. I, w- I would be okay with that. I would be okay with that. If, if Toronto wanted to part with him, uh, because I don't see Toronto doing anything in the postseason at all. Um, Barrios is pitching well. He is. And and really did not stop that much. Since, you know, I, I would entertain a Jose Barrios reunion. Well, and he's, uh, I believe, in the last since like 2014 or 2015, whatever. I think he's like fourth in most innings pitched. Like yeah, this guy, he, right. He pitches and I, I think he would be happy to come back here, don't you? Absolutely. Get okay. out of Canada? Hell yeah. Okay, well, good. Well done. Well done. Okay. Um, quickly, and I did because I, geez, man, I must have had a senior moment. We're talking twins, and I bring up PJ Dozier, uh, but we'll, we'll go back to the Wolves. What what did you think about that that pickup? Because, like I said, my my buddy Connor, are you so excited? And I was like, eh, yeah, okay. I I don't like it. Why? Is, why is that? It's it it's a roster spot that he's taking up for a guy that we already have some unproven guys fighting for roster spots. When you look at Leonard Miller, Josh Minot, yep. even Terrence Shannon at this point, he's playing really well. Um, really well. <laughs> yeah. But, but and and PJ's had some good run with, with Denver. And so I understand the connection there. Yeah. But, but he goes back and forth between the G league as well. So, they, I mean, there's, I don't think there's any real guarantee that he's got, it, he's got a roster spot nailed down. Do you? No, it's a non-guaranteed contract. So, you know, at some point in the year, you can kind of just non-guarantee it and, and and cut them. So it's nothing final, but I would have rather said, hey, let's go spend a roster spot. I mean, we still have a roster spot open, um, and I've heard rumors of John Wall taking that spot. Well, you um, know why? You know who his boy is, right? Oh, yeah, he's Dillingham's uh, mentor, yeah, right. which I take yeah. it. Absolutely. I guess he went – he would go to any – or every every one of Dillingham's games all the time mm-hmm. at Kentucky, right? Uh, I always kind of like John Wall. I I thought he fucked his career up just a little bit. Like I always thought he was going to be better than what he was. Maybe just because he had one one really great year. Um, I would welcome John Wall on this team. Yeah, I don't yeah. think it's going to happen, but 
you know, it's he, he said he would take a minimum anywhere at this point, and I think it it makes sense here just with what I, was his last team? Uh he was with the Clippers for for a little bit two years ago, I believe. Um but you know, he, it would be a nice little guy to to back up, you know, if you can't trust Dillingham right away, I don't mind bringing Wall off the bench for a couple games here and there uh, to, to handle the ball, especially losing McLaughlin. Um, you know, you kind of need some of that. Yeah, I, would, I would take John Wall. I would. And it, yeah. And, and, you know, I, I wanted them to go after, I saw like Gary Trent signed a minimum deal with, with Milwaukee, which right. man, if you could have got him for minimum, like that would have been a steal, but um, I really like the Joe Ingles deal. Love yeah. it. Um, well, because you know. it, it gives you options offensively, at least, um, you know, when, you know, th there were times in the postseason last year that I was like, I, I think it was one of the big ones, like where they started, you know, a quarter with only one pure scorer on the, on the, on the floor at the time, you know, so it, it gives you an option as far as scoring or whatever. So that's, that's interesting. I do want to make. Uh, one correction and apology. Um, I think last podcast said Anthony Edwards was wearing um, the number one as a uniform choice or whatever. And he's not, he's wearing number five. I was wrong on that. I don't fucking care. He's still with all the motherfuckers that you have on that team, including um, the guy from Indiana, Hal Burton, right? Mm -hmm. I still think that Anthony Edwards is the one that you want to watch on this team, dude. And and when I watched uh what was it? Uh not it wasn't the Canada game, uh, or maybe oh Australia, right? First quarter, and he have like 12 points in the first quarter, and I was just like, 14. no, 14, that's it. And to me, it looks like he is so comfortable right now that he could heat up where all you got to do, and you're like, you got to, you know, you got to distribute the ball all the way around because there's so many fucking jerks on this team that have to have their due diligence, right? But Edwards looks like right now he's so comfortable that he could drop 30 on a South Sudan, okay? Just like that. Just like that. Yep. Um, I'm curious now if you're following who's still available NBA free agent wise. Um, I have a, I have three, we have one roster spot available. Typically I think they're, they're doing, they're going to keep it open for this. Uh, I think there's a strong possibility this, you've heard of Hyphy or Hefe from our summer league team. No, something he's playing really well. I think they might, might offer him a contract, but I would prefer to go the vet route to fill this last spot. So I'm going to give you three guys. Um, and I want you to tell me who let, let, rank them in order okay. who you who you'd rather have um, on your team member. It's a minimum deal. Um, yeah. So John Wall. No John Wall on here. Okay. <laughs> Spencer Dinwiddie. Okay. Gordon Hayward. And Luke Kennard. I would have to. I would have to lean towards the top two guys and and I think that I would I would go with Spencer over Gordon Hayward. I I wouldn't mind Spencer in the in, right? in, in a role. He he scores. He scores. Gordon uh, Hayward is just crap. Just <laughs> junk. He is. I mean, he shot 41% from three last year. Where was he last year? He was with uh, Charlotte, and then he went to right. OKC. Um, no, remember what Boston gave him, and like, and then at, it was the first game of the season, and he was never the same. Like, I liked him in Utah, but that was that wasn't a cup of coffee ago. That was a black tar fucking <laughs> mocha latte you know, spring shamrock shake ago. That was so long ago. Um, and that's what I said. Like, I, I think I would take Spencer in that situation. So I, I, I think I would almost take Luke Kennard first. Really? Because of for the look, shooting 45% last yep. year from three. Um, 
can light it up. And and the defense really isn't there, but when you look at a team that just really – the defense is great um, and just needed some scores off the bench, especially – when you run those lineups, you know, where you had really only one good shooter and it, it would be nice to pair a Joe Ingles and a Luke Kennard and then adding a Rob Dillingham in there, you know, with, with a Nas Reed <laughs> at the five, right. that bench unit would be, would be insane. So I, I like that. Um, if I had to go with a point guard, there's one guy out there that I'd be, curious to see if if we could make it happen um just just based off of the pure potential and that's markel fultz who had some decent years in orlando recently yeah yeah remember it's a minimum deal so it, it's nothing right right, right right um right. and that, so that's interesting okay uh you know it, it's good to have options because it seemed like everybody was worried about the Wolves having to spend one more penny, you know? And, and so like the Ingles deal surprised me. Um, and to be able to think that we might be able to get at least somebody that's going to be able to contribute or help out down the road. Like I, I like it. And like I say, future's bright, man. Got to wear shades. If you're a yeah, twin yeah. fan or a Timberwolves fan or a Vikings fan that, well, not this year, but wow. next year. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, well, just to prove a point and and to show you, I mean, I don't, I don't want to beat uh, a dead horse here, but I, I just want to prove a point because I, I, it's not like I'm going to throw you um, under the bus at all on this because I think I could ask. Well, I, I know this. I could ask any one of my friends who watch sports the way we do, and I know they would fail. All of the women basketball players that I know, that I know personally, that are still active and are so pro WM, I know they would fail. I don't really know of a lot of people in my life, you know, that that I that I hang out or talk to on a daily basis that that would would pass this test. But I'm going to give it to you right now. There are 12 teams in the WNBA. Can you name them? Uh, okay. And if you can, and if you even, you know what? I was going to put the over under at six for you, but if you even get close to 10, I will, I will give you daisies and daffodils. Do I need the, the city name too? Like, do I need that would help? Name? That would help so that you know what you're talking about. I can, Okay, so well, I'll start out. You six know, in the East and six in the West. Yep. Well, we got the Minnesota Lynx. We have the New York Liberty. Yep. That, yep. Um, I almost said Phoenix Sun. Is there a sun in there? The no, sun. there is a Phoenix rising, you know. Phoenix Mercury. Yes, that's three. Uh... The Indiana Fever. <laughs> That's four. Um, is there a Mystics? There's a Mystics, isn't there? There is, but you gotta you gotta tell me where they're from. Uh, okay. That's, uh, my whole point. That's my whole fucking. Yeah, point. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, there we got the Seattle Storm, right? That's okay. That's Las five. Vegas. Las Vegas Aces. You're looking at your computer right now. I'm literally not. I I can show okay. it to you. I got I'm of, on on or on a uh, on NBA 2K. They they flash the WNBA yep. teams on there, and I'm thinking yep. there's the is it there's a oh, is it St. Louis? Does they no Saint, no no not the Spirit or no that was an old ABA team. That oh Bob yeah, yeah, yeah. This was the uh, yeah <laughs> um. Los Angeles Sparks. Yeah, sure. What is that now? What am I? At? What Seven, am I, at? I believe. Well, you didn't really get Phoenix, so it's back to six. Phoenix. Phoenix. Who's the sun? I know there's a sun. Oh well, yeah, that's not Phoenix though. <laughs> <laughs> well, goodness. Uh, um, 
Okay. Uh, I don't know. That might be it. What? Hold on. Washington Mystics. There you go. Yep. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. Um, let's see. What major cities have I not <laughs> have I not done? Um, <coughs> is Atlanta? Atlanta. Atlanta Dream. Yeah. Very good. Wow. You're getting close. Um, okay. Now I'm trying to think of major cities again. <laughs> Um, it's my point public. Okay. That's my point folks. When yeah. you got to think of major cities just to get through and Philly ain't one of them. No. Mm. Let's see. I got Vegas. I had Los Angeles, Seattle's in there. Did you say what Las Vegas, team name was the aces? Okay, good. Yeah. Good. I believe you're at eight right now. Okay. Um, you had one, you had the, I'm still trying to figure out the sun. I don't know where they play. A stupid sun. Where? <laughs> and they they were, I believe, one of the originals. Like that was the only place that didn't have any pro teams at all, but they had a WNBA franchise. Connecticut. Correct. Okay. Then we have. Uh, I need one more, right? No, you need three more. Three more, three more. Oh, the Chicago Sky. Good. Angel, Angel Reese's uh Angel Reese's team. I'm sorry, now you need three more. You have the Mystics, but you didn't tell me where they're from. Well, now I remember where the wings are from. That's Dallas. Oh wow. Are you sure you're not looking? I I swear my hands are, <laughs> I'm not, 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 you got 10 right now. I'm impressed. I, I'm just thinking of major city. I, well, I said it was Washington mystics, correct? Very good. Now you're at 11. You got one more buddy. And I am, man, I might have to buy you a McMuffin. Oh, one of those places that should have a team and will have a team in the NBA. In the NBA. And think of your father. Well, he likes Montreal. No basketball. Oh, maybe, wow. Maybe, maybe he never, maybe he never told you who his, who his first NBA love was. Oh. Well, let's see. Oh, I'm disappointed. Hang on. You think the glove, you think Kevin Durant starting out. Did I say Phoenix? No, you said Phoenix. That's the Mercury. Yep. You didn't get Mercury, but I'll give it, give it to you. I got, you don't know your dad NBA team back in the day. Vin Baker. Hang on, hang on. No, 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 no. Yep. You're talking about Seattle. Right. And they I have said a WNBA Storm. team. Yeah, what? Seattle Storm. I said them. Oh, you said them already. So I, I think I got them all. I think I'm at them all. Okay. I, I believe you do. I believe you do. That That's impressive. I would have never given you, you know, <laughs> now now I'm now you're not a sports guy. I would never because there's not a lot of people that could even come now. Now, for me, I can go right down. I can go east. New York Liberty, Connecticut Sun, Washington Mystic, Indiana Fever, Chicago Sun, Atlanta Dream. I, I'm sorry, Chicago Sky, Atlanta Dream. West, Dallas, uh, Sky, uh, Dallas Wings, Minnesota Lynx, Phoenix Mercury, L.A. Sparks, Seattle Storm, and uh, Las Vegas Aces. Okay, I would challenge anybody to be able to, but I, I'm really impressed with your 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 work there, sir. Well, now I'm looking at the standings. I thought Minnesota was killing it. They're in third. They were. Place. They lost a few. They okay. they they finally got. Uh, I believe they beat. Was it the Mystics? Because they're terrible, but they mm -hmm. had lost two in a row um, previously. So uh, no, but and we have a WNBA or I'm sorry, a Minnesota Lynx player on the Olympic team. Do you know who that is? Um, 
it's a foreign name, isn't it? Well, I, you never know these days. It's, it's... Uh, oh, let's start with a J. No, Collier, oh. right? Now, Fisha oh. Collier or whatever. Oh, okay. okay, yep, yep. Okay. All right, well, uh, I, th I think we covered it. Maybe that was maybe a longer segment than it than it needed to be. Um, I'm going to end it on this deal. So I just want to make sure because I know that I can use um, material on Noah, who is way younger than I am, and he has not watched any of the things that I've watched as far as movies or TV. So, and, and, and here's the deal. Like I, I had three parents growing up, you know, obviously Vern and Kathy and an, and an old friend I call television. And so there have been a lot of references throughout our podcast that probably Noah doesn't, doesn't get, but maybe it's like new material. He laughs at it because he's never, but I, I do quote a lot of television, a lot of, a lot of movies um, throughout and I don't pass it on as my own, but here's what I'm going to offer right now. Um, and I don't even know if you know that I'm doing that, Noah, throughout our, our podcast. But um, I don't know if also if anybody ever contacts us and says, hey, watch the show and I want to comment on this part or whatever you said on that part. But here's what I'm going to offer right now. From now until the Vikings first regular season game, if folks want to be able to call in, talk to us, email us, whatever. I don't know how it works. And you can identify the, the quote that I had made and reference the movie or the television show that I'm referencing in that quote. There's going to be a very, very special, a very, very special prize at the end of that. So, so you basically have until September. I'm throwing that out there. If nobody wants to play, fuck off. Uh, but that that is because... We need to try some different things here so it just doesn't get stagnant. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> do you get any of my references at all? Uh, I would say probably 56% of them. 56%? The other, yeah. Lawrence Taylor. Okay. All right. Well, uh, we may have gone a little over. I know that I was... Uh, you know, I was I was pounding a lot of tables today, but like I say, it's been a bad week for me. Um, but I think that we solved some of the world's problems today. Uh, anything else that you wanna 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 talk about uh, to end 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 it out here? No. Uh, well, one, uh, the Twins had their draft a couple of days ago, um, yeah. and we won't go into it. But uh, keep an eye on that that first round pick, Kalen Culpepper. He's gonna be good. Oh, another Culpepper with a Minnesota team. I don't know if I can take it, man. Um, yeah, Twins have been, I'm, I'm saying the Twins have drafted very well uh, in, in, in recent, in recent last three, four, five years. So, uh, all right, Culpepper, hope he's not from Central Florida. Um, for Noah Starzinger down in KC, Missouri, I'm Johnny Voss, the show to be named later podcast. We'll see you next time very soon, I hope. <laughs>